You may have seen my recent video when me and my mate Corin tried to make two kayaks in two weeks. We did finish one, but I still have mine to finish. I've made a start on that, but I've put it aside for now to start working on the seat, and I reckon it's worthy of its own video, so that's what I'm making today. The seat's designed by Nick Scheider from Gillamock Kayaks, and the plans use quite a few laminations which are shaped before they glue together, and that leaves them easy to blend in with just a small amount of carving. I'll be using bigger blocks, so I'll go about things differently, but hoping to get the same result. I've got some Queensland maple and camphor laurel and some of that is scraps from past videos and I'll start by preparing the maple. A few years ago I bought a pile of different timbers and this maple was in there. It's already been dressed but I think somebody's joint fence must have been a little bit out of square. I'll change the blade in my table saw and square those up. I've been trying out these CMT blades and the one that's in is more suited for cross cutting. The seat blank needs to be wider than the three blocks so I'll fill it out with some more maple and I'll sandwich that with a couple of thin accent strips of camphor laurel. The whole thing is too tall, so next I'll cut the pieces down to the correct height. Next I need to cut the camphor laurel into thin strips and because the grain is running all over the place the jointer wouldn't be able to cope with it and it would break up for sure. So instead I'll hot glue it down to a sled and I'll run it through the thicknesser and that should cope much better with the smaller blades of the helical head. This isopropyl alcohol works great at releasing the hot glue but it's difficult to get the glue underneath the wood so on the next ones I glued around the outside of the piece rather than the face and that worked much better. I'll hot glue them down again and plane the opposite faces on the thicknesser. That didn't go perfectly, there were a few pieces that broke out, I'm not really surprised, but luckily there's still enough there to play with. They could have done with one more light pass, so I'll just finish them with a the sander. I'll trim the strips down, then start gluing the seat blank together. And while I do that, I'll take a moment to tell you about the Maker's Mob 99 cent woodworking sale, which is our biggest sale of the year, where you'll not only get access to learn how to make some of my top woodworking projects, you'll also get over 90 woodworking tutorials with plans from YouTube's top makers like Jimmy DeResta, John Heise, John Peters, the Samurai Carpenter, and Frank Howarth, as well as myself. And right now, if you click the link in the description below, we're also hosting a two-month Routabit challenge where you can upload your own projects that you've made and compete with woodworkers at different skill levels from all over the world in order to win thousands of dollars in prizes from CMT Tools and Taylor Toolworks. So click the link in the description below and learn woodworking from YouTube's top makers and take advantage of this 99 cent sale before it ends. And I'll see you on the inside.
I've cut one edge at 15 degrees and now I need to plane down the accent strips so I can flip it over and I can put that face down on the table saw to cut a 15 degree angle off the other edge. I've got a piece of camphor laurel for the front of the seat and for the back I've got another piece of maple and I'll use a camphor laurel accent strip with that too. I'll glue the back piece together first and then I'll run it through the table saw to cut the accent strip down to the correct thickness. Before I glue them, I'll cut a 15 degree angle off the edges so they sit flush with the top of the blank. While the glue's setting on that, I'll prepare some more camphor laurel and that's for another layer that gets glued on the top. These pieces get glued together and next I need to cut them out using the templates from the plans. There's one more small piece and then it will be ready to start carving. I also need a backrest for the kayak and while the glue's setting up on the seat I'll start working on that. I've already prepared the wood off camera, I just need to cross cut it to length and then start gluing it together. As part of the Maker's Mob Rout a Bit Challenge we've partnered with Taylor Tool Works and CMT to offer the award winning Italian made CMT router bits and saw blades. CMT has the widest portfolio of router bits and saw blades on the market and received the perfect 10 by wood magazine. Taylor Tool Works carries the largest selection and has the best prices on CMT bits and blades. You can save 30 to 50% off on the bits and blades that I used in this video by shopping at taytools.com. Links are in the description below. In addition, use the code CMT10 at checkout to save an extra 10%. The backrest is pretty straightforward. It's just a few blocks of maple and that's edged with camphor laurel to match the seat. I'll put that aside to set and get back to the seat. If I'd built the seat exactly from the plans, then I'd have the laminations in place and all I'd have to do now is blend those in. 
but instead I'm going to drill holes and there'll be depth guides and I can take certain points from those laminations on the drawings and transfer them onto the seat. I did think about carving it with hand tools and I nearly did but I decided to power carve it instead. It makes so much mess and it's noisy but it does remove material quickly. I'm starting to see the bottom of some of these holes so I need to be a bit careful. This is starting to tear one or two bits up so I'll go a little bit further and then I'll put a flat disc on and I'll finish it with that. It doesn't look the best at this stage, but it should come together. So next I'll use the 40 grit disc to start evening it out and blend it all together. The worst part about using the flat disc is it makes dust rather than chips, but it still removes a fair amount of material and there's a bit more control. You could still dig in and ruin a piece, but not as easily as with a power carving disc. The rain stopped so I took it outside along with the dust. Next I did some hand sanding to refine it further, taking out any slight humps and bumps. The actual seat where you park your bum is looking good so next I'll start shaping the front section. I'm working away at it bit by bit and next I'll cut around the outside edge. Next I'll start carving the underneath and I've marked out two sections which will be the feet. I'll carve around those and I'll leave them untouched. I haven't drilled any depth guides on the underneath. Instead I'll remove the areas I know I can do so safely and then gradually refine it from there a bit at a time. I'll be carving the seat pretty thin as it'll get reinforced with fiberglass and that will keep the weight down but you could definitely leave more mass on the underneath and mount this to a stool, which I reckon would look great. I'm just feeling where the high spots are and taking those off until there's some kind of consistent thickness. Thank <laughs> you. 
That's still far too thick, so next I'll mark the edge and I'll thin that out. From there I'll take that thickness down and around the underneath. That's really starting to get there, so next I'll sand the underneath and smooth it out. The edge looks a bit boring and flat, so next I'll add a bit more shape to it. I sanded away it a bit more and thinned down the whole seat and also did some hand sanding to shape the edge. I used the soft pad on the sander to finish it at 120 grit. I reckon it looks fantastic. Next I'll quickly try and finish the backrest. Um, before I glue the bottom edge on, I'll cut some angles on it first. I thought it needed a bit more angle, so I made an adjustment and I cut them again. I'll trim those edge strips down and then glue the last piece on. I'll mark out the shape of the backrest and then cut it out on the bandsaw. To help keep the piece upright while cutting it, I'll hot glue a block to it first. Next I'll mark out and shape the face.
it makes more sense for me to fiberglass and finish the seat and the backrest when I'm fiberglassing the kayak itself. So for now, I'll spray some water on so you get a bit of an idea how it will look. And you'll have to check out my next kayak video to see them finished. I reckon the seat looks awesome and it'll be a highlight of the finished kayak. If you want to make a seat like this for yourself, maybe for a stall or even a kayak, then I'll put a link to Nick's plans in the description. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.